Hi, this is a half ten size crystal oscillator that is commonly used in digital circuitry for clock signal generation. This one is a 24 MHz one, and the output is connected to my HP 5350B frequency counter. And you can see that the measured frequency is right around 24 MHz. And of course, I also chained the output to another frequency counter for verification, and you can see that the other frequency counter is the Rackle Dana one up there, and it shows 24 MHz as well. And both the HP and the Rackle Dana frequency counters are actually very accurate. Their measured results are only about 7 Hz apart. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my finger on this crystal can. I wanted to see how that affects the frequency output. So for that, let me actually set the camera to point to the HP 5350B. Hopefully you can see it. And let me hold up the crystal here, and you can see here. Now if I put my thumb on it, you can see that just a few seconds, we already see about 20 Hz or so frequency change. So the temperature stability of these crystal cans are actually pretty lousy. And as I have just demonstrated here, even just my new temperature change would cause the crystal oscillator's output frequency to drift. For your typical circuits, the temperature stability of a standard oscillator is more than sufficient. But for circuits like our precision frequency counters, obviously the oscillator stability needs to be much higher, as the measurement accuracy depends on the precision and stability of the oscillator used as the reference. So in most cases, an oven-controlled crystal oscillator or an OCXO is used in these high-precision equipment. Both the 5350B and the Record Dana Frequency Counter, for example, have OCXOs inside. Now here I have a 10 MHz oven-controlled crystal oscillator that has been powered on for about an hour now. So the output frequency should have been stabilized. Let's actually take a look on the frequency counter. You can see the frequency display on the HP 5350B is essentially 10 MHz with the last few digits 987.4 and we do have a 0.1 Hz resolution in this frequency range. And of course let's take a look at the Dana as well. You can see that essentially it is measuring exactly the same frequency with probably just 1 Hz out. And more importantly the output is very stable. If I touch the case, actually let me show you the frequency counter again. So right now you can see it's 87.1 if I touch the case, and you can see that the output barely changes. And now my hand is on it, you can see the frequency remains 87.1. And this is somewhat to be expected, as the oven temperature is precisely controlled. Anyway, let me actually cut open this crystal oscillator and take a look inside. Alright, I just cut open the case. And you can see here, inside the case, we have some insulation material. Now, the material here is actually not as thick as I expected. In some crystal ovens, the insulation material is quite thick. But here, we just have a thin layer. Now, the overall construction is actually slightly different than the other OCXOs I have taken apart before. And you can see the crystal is being heated by this heating coil. Not sure if you can see these. These are the coils around the crystal. In some other crystal ovens that I have seen, the crystals are being heated by active components, for example transistors and MOSFETs, and there are also additional insulation inside, but here we don't see any additional insulation. Of course, the specs of these ovenized crystals are obviously different. Here is the spec I can find on this Toyocom OCXO that I have here. And let me bring in a thermal camera and take a look. And you can see that as we expected, the coils around the crystal actually is the heating element. Of course, the crystal would be hermetically sealed to prevent any moisture that could potentially alter the operating frequency of the crystal. The circuit board also has conformal coating on it, as you can probably see from this angle. You can see that the crystal is mounted on this cylindrical structure, is presumably for added rigidity. And the outer casing along with the crystal structure are actually grounded. And here's a close-up look of the heating coil around the crystal. And here on the cap you can see we have a solder on the thermistor and that is used to monitor the temperature of the crystal and provide feedback to the temperature control loop. Now you can see also underneath we have a few transistors. I'm not sure actually all the transistors are doing, but at least one of these is presumably to drive the heating coil here. I'm actually quite surprised to see these many capacitors inside this crystal here. You can see we have quite a few of these. And of course we also have a couple of ICs, you can see one here, one there. Now because of the conformal coating, I can't really see what ICs they're using here. And we also, of course, 
have a good old 7805 linear regulator at the bottom there. And that one actually the marking is visible. This crystal oven is actually powered by 12 volts, so that linear regulator is used to regulate the internal voltage to 5 volts. And if I have to guess, the chip up here is probably a 74 series logic gate. And the chip down there may be an op amp or some sort. And that's pretty much what's inside this oven controlled crystal oscillator. And by the way, just to show you how accurate the HP 5350B actually is, right now I'm actually showing you the measurement of the frequency from my rubidium frequency standard. And you can see that after all these years, it's only 0.1 Hz out. So this is actually quite impressive considering how long this HP 5350B was last calibrated, probably it was more than 30 years ago. And it really hasn't drifted that much since last time I showed you, the result is actually pretty much exactly the same. And if you look at the measurement on the record data, you will see that we are essentially measuring exactly 10 MHz as well. Now this one is probably a little bit more out, maybe by 1.3 Hz. Anyway, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you find this video interesting and learn something new. If you like the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.